The second Cameroon International Banana Planting Festival closes up in the Southwest region with several memorandum of understanding, of understanding signed to the tune of more than 70 billion CFA francs. The three-day festival was chaired by Cameroon's Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobi. And Cameroon's Indomitable Lions squad of 2000 trashes the Super Eagles squad of the set year in a 3 1 victory that took place at the Limbengeme Stadium. This gala match was prior to the second edition of the Banana Planting Festival that just ended in the Southwest region. Those were our top stories. Good evening to you all. You're welcome to High Prime for Monday, the 4th of December 2023. For presentation, I am a in Larry Kevin Tabot. We start off with one of our lead stories the second edition of the Banana planting festival has wrapped up in the southwest region that was presided over by the uh, president's representative the minister of agriculture and rural development gabriel Bayrobi, who actually encourages our uh, cultivators in the sector on government firm commitment towards the valorization of the said sector more with our reporter claudine tamfo Activities marking the final of the second edition of the Banana Plantation Festival in Cameroon are taking place in Limbe, being presided over by the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, who doubles as the President's representative. Very, very impressed with the engagement and the commitment of the farmer Bangem and uh, in Kupe Manenguba to uh, uh, banana plantain process units in order to pro to produce uh, flour, ships, and any byproducts of banana plantain. Key during these celebrations was the signing of multiple agreements with different key stakeholders to the sum of 70 billion CFA targeting the banana plantation sectors. Industrialization of agriculture in this country is the one way that the country can really become a juggernaut in Central Africa. We have a total portfolio with the banana plantain and we are hoping that the financing coming from the African Development Bank, we can have some of that money to be able to multiply the number of cooperatives that we have and therefore touch other people who are in need of this financing, which can not only change their life but change the economic situation of the country. With exhibitions done on the esplanade of the festival, as government congratulates actors in this part of the economy with the import substitution policy, she remains resolute in attaining these key activities in the nearest future. Over to education, where some 111 laureates from the Boya Government Teachers Training College at my 17 has been sent off. From that institution, the ceremony was presided over by the director of the school, Kange Moses, who exalted the outgoing teachers to be ambassadors of the school. More with you, Rita Mafani Mujoko. <laughs> Impacting knowledge is the daunting tax that entails constant practice and burning of midnight candles. These are the graduating students of the 29th badge of the Government Teachers Training College, My 17 Boye. Doubled with the award ceremony which took place at the said campus, the event chaired by the representative of the Divisional Officer for Boye. The principal congratulates the graduates as he recounts on how the academic year unfolded. This is the 29th badge of student teachers who are graduating here in GPT Sibuya. We had 126 who had to graduate. The number um, that I can say is 111 who are present here this morning to graduate. The academic year was not an easy one. Teachers put all hands on deck to see that the performance was not bad at all. So that is proven by the beautiful performance our students had in last year's official exams. With over 126 candidates registered for exams, 111 students made it in flying colors with 100% pass. The principal equally points out some of the challenges which the students and the school face as a result of the environment and position of the school campus. The extension of the car, motor, the car park into the school campus, the invasion of the establishment by mad persons and footballers, the misuse of the school land by passers-by coupled with vandalism of property. These things were really a hard nut to grab. In spite 
of the seemingly dark circumstances mentioned, these student teachers graduating today built courage, tenacity, resilience, and worked even harder to inculcate the required teaching skills. Teaching being a noble profession, the graduates were called upon to maintain and uphold the ethics of the profession, a journey some of them recount. The ceremony, I feel impressed and motivated and I went through how to just moments where we are schooling, but now we thank Almighty God for His grace and strength, what He has been doing the past months and years. Our fellow colleagues and friends, family members are here to celebrate with us. It was not an easy journey, but God, who has been keeping us, God has been faithful, and today we are here and celebrating our success. The graduates, on their part, promise to carry on with the knowledge acquired as they move into the field of teaching and training the next generation of leaders. Crossing over to culture, the semi-finals of Miss Bando has con been concluded in the town of Boya. The beauty contest that saw uh, that saw several ladies from Fakot Division who showcased their cultural diversity in beauty and all its ramifications was the one that caught the attention of a newsroom reporter, Cynthia Lato. The physical attractiveness well checked, the ideas fully nurtured, the leaders take careful steps under the admirative eyes of the audience. There are seven beauty pageant contestants of the 2023 Bando Cultural Festival. <laughs> They are at the semi-finals of the competition this December 2, 2023. In traditional attires, spotways, and other designed fabrics, the misses make turns in different passages, characterized by insightful exchanges with the judges. The god of the mountain is called Epasamutu. At the proclamation of the result, three of the contestants are selected. The beauty queen at the stage of the competition is excited. Her dreams have materialized. <laughs> Very proud of your girl, and I'm really excited. I wasn't expecting it though, but I really worked hard, and I wish to be among the top three because I want to go to the final. And I'm really happy my dream came true. Not only been among the top three, but I emerged as a winner of Miss Bango Kuya. I'm really excited, mad full of joy. I'll make it to the finals, and at the finals, I promise you, you're going to see more. The first runner-up also looks forth to the next phase of the competition. And as you can see, we emerged as the first runner-up in this panel. And I feel so happy because I noticed an opportunity for me to carry out my project. So thank you all for supporting. The beauty pageant contest will continue in Limbe as one of the activities organized to commemorate the Mbando Cultural Festival, which unfolds in the Faculty Division of the Southwest Region from the 9th to the 16th December 2023. The cultural event will be characterized by other activities including wrestling, football, canoe race amongst others. On to economy, fish import in Cameroon has increased by 27.3% in 2022. A recent report from the Ministry of Economy and that of Trade that reveals this increase is in a bid to satisfy a home production deficits as the country remains resilient when it comes to fishery uh, domestication in the Semaksop region. This is with our reporter on that, Cynthia Latte. According to a recent report from the Ministry of the Economy, Cameroon's 2022 fish imports stood at 241,798 tons. This represents an increase of 27.3% compared to the previous year when they summed up to 190,000 tons. This import was in a bid to satisfy home production deficit as the country produced only 233,100 tons in 2022 compared to 223,400 tons in the previous year year. With the quantities produced and combined, Cameroon had 474,100 tons of fish in 2022. This allowed the country to satisfy part of the demand estimated at 500,000 tons per year. The same report revealed that the government is working to raise the level of production in the fish industry with measures including carrying out better control of the maritime coast, continuing the fight against illegal fishing and the development of commercial aquaculture, amongst many others. 
The Bank of the Central African State, Bayak, projects an increase in fish production in the country for this end of year, favored by the drying up of rivers under the effects of drought. You are watching High Prime and we are coming to you live from our main studio here in High Television. We now take you to news all of the shores of Cameroon, where in Uganda, where Ugandan woman who becomes Africa's oldest nursing mother as she gave birth at the age of 70 to a set of twins last Wednesday, the 29th of November 2023, in the capital city of Kampala. Our reporter on that is Aisha Beng. Adam sees a medicine have meant that even past menopause, which typically happens between the ages of 45 to 55, women like Namukwaya are now able to give birth. The woman had undergone fertility treatment at the Women's Hospital International and Fertility Center. This is extraordinary achievement, delivering twins to Africa's oldest mother at 70 years. Well, there are some um, opinion of group of people who may, will say, look, if this woman is 70 and the, uh, she's likely to die earlier and the children will be left uh, helpless, and then that's not a good thing to encourage this sort of women to become pregnant. Safina Namukwaya delivered boy and girl twins via caesarean prematurely at 31 weeks. The babies were put in incubators and are said to be stable. I birth to twins. When I had a checkup, they told me I had twins. I was very happy. And I took good care of this pregnancy as a happy person. This is Namukwaya's second delivery in three years after giving birth to a girl in 2020. Age is just a number. A young woman can also die of complications from pregnancy. An old woman, if she is fit, can also survive. The twins' bed makes the Uganda woman Africa's oldest new mother. On to sports, uh, in a bit to the celebration of the Banana Plantain Festival, a gala match that took place at the Limbing Game Stadium, pitting the Intermittable Lion Squad of 2000 and their counterparts of the Super Eagles from Nigeria, where the Intermittable Lions trashed the Super Eagles squad of 2000 in a 3 1 victory at the Limbing Game Stadium. Our reporter on that story is Sonita Nguni. In a bid to repeat what happened in the 2000 Afghan finals in Nigeria, the 2000 generation of Team Cameroon have defeated the Super Eagles of Nigeria, headed by JJ Okocha, three goals to one, at the Limbe Ome Sports Stadium on November 30, 2023. The game, which saw the Super Eagles open score by Terence Anyatowo, saw Team Cameroon replied with shots from Samuel Eto, Ntantu, and Njip Tambe. This is much for Gala match. So what was here from Sir Ben Achuta. He tries to find a Samuel Eto. The final goal is really a little bit. To send Peter Rufai for the second time to the back of his net in this international gala. In 2017 his concerns, he has played for several clubs in China, such as uh, Jihan Zingzu. In China, thousands of spectators present. It was a dream come true as many who were not yet born during the 2000 have appeased of what happened. While to some of the players, the gala match was an opportunity for them to revisit some of their great football moments. Something like this has happened in another part of Africa, but to see uh, this concept, a uh, group of players who is great football on the continent internationally come here all the way to Limbe and then just raise this uh, beautiful uh, province. I think it's, uh, it's a beautiful initiative. We said we knew that it was good, but uh, playing with them today was so, was so uh, important. Mabakesa playing against Nigeria today for a very long time. How do you feel? My last game with, uh, against Nigeria was in 1992 uh, in uh, Senegal, let's go. And then today, playing with all this, the, in the field was two players, Ikeba at me was the young player in 1992 in Senegal. 
and we meet all, we meet today. We are so happy and say thank you for for all the organization. Thank you for the recognition. They are calling for you. Uh, we are talking a lot about the uh, village in Nigeria, but uh, if you make two, we can make three. Peace yeah. in the region. So we are very happy to be here. Whatever is going to bring unity, love, peace, togetherness. That's why we are here. And we have a good day. Two of the countries that have won the Olympics, so we know the rivalry. Apart from the rivalry, Cameroon and Nigeria have a great history of friendship, and uh, it symbolizes that. The only difference is when the two, play, the two countries are playing on the pitch, then it becomes something spicy, hot. But after the games, we are still brothers, we are friends, you know, so we are honored to be here today. And credit to be to, to see some of these former players. We've not seen some of them for the uh, for the past 23 years. You know, so great to be here in Lembi, and, uh, and I'm happy that the fans are very happy. The media in Nigeria has been following our coming here to Cameroon, and people are back uh, back. They are happy back home in Nigeria. I hope in the future we we'll do the same and bring the Cameroon uh, legend back to Lagos. For the Super Eagles of Nigeria have equally promised to revenge their defeat as they look forward to inviting Team Cameroon to have a replay of the game. Here comes an opportunity for the Super Eagles. That's story from Sonita Ngonyo. This is where we conclude this package of High Prime for Monday, the 4th of December 2023. Good night from the Senate.